Genesis 1, verses 20 through 23 says, And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living thing with which the water teems, and that moves about in it, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas. Let the birds increase on the earth. And there was morning the fifth day. Did you know that God really did create all of the things that live in the water and all of the birds too? That's very cool. All right, get your creative thinking caps on and think about all of the words God might have spoken to create these living creatures. Do you think he might have spoken each fish scale and each bird feather into being one at a time? Do you think he might have spoken exactly how he wanted each shape of the fish fins and bird beaks to be? What about their eyes? When you look at the water creatures and the birds, you'll notice one thing is pretty common among them all. They almost all have feathers or fins that make them camouflaged. Because fish and fowl have natural predators, each one needs to be able to blend in so they stand a better chance of not being eaten. Chomp! Okay, let's take a look at the exact definition of camouflage. Camouflage is a technique used to create a sort of invisibility. By painting colors in certain patterns, an item will blend in with its surroundings. Now, let's take a look at a couple of the fish and birds that use camouflage to catch their food. The stonefish is the camouflage master. They blend in so well their predators have trouble seeing them. The venom found in their dorsal fin spines is so venomous it is capable of killing a human in less than one hour. American bittern birds are known as stealth predators to fish. A fantastic technique that an American bittern bird uses to capture food is standing completely motionless with its beak straight up in the air. Along with their streaked brown and cream color feathers, this pose allows them to appear as the marsh vegetation. They also wobble their necks to cast shadows so they can see the fish. When they do this, it also has a similar look like that of a dancing reed in the wind. Let's take a moment and reflect on just how big God really is. We know he's really big because he created the entire universe, space, the stars, suns, and moons. I often marvel at the fact that God is so big, yet he made hummingbird feet, and those are really tiny. I think about how God is so big, yet he made shrimp legs. Now it's your turn. What do you marvel at in God's creation of water creatures and birds? God is so big, yet he made... Well, that wraps up our sixth Bible discovery adventure in our creation series. It's time to talk to God. Say the following prayer out loud to God. He will listen, I guarantee. Dear God, thank you for creating all the water creatures and the birds. I want to learn more about them so that I can learn more about you and your creation. Please help me to be more aware of the birds in the air and the creatures in the water. And please remind me to thank you for your creation each time I see or hear them. In Jesus' name, amen.